Well, I'm uh, coming along to the Samaritans headquarters in Douglas now and talking with Pauline. And uh, it's not often actually we, we talk to the Samaritans. And in fact, in the old days, you wouldn't be doing this at all, would you really, Pauline? It's all very confidential in, in, in that old way. But now... It was, but, but we do now um, welcome people into the centre to do face-to-face -face talks um, if they want to, rather than phoning us or emailing us. Um, and we also do SMS, which is texting wow, modern day. Wow, that's really modern. Yeah. But I mean, the, the point you're doing this with us today is, uh, and I know you're going down the Strand Shopping Centre, is you're on a recruitment drive. We are. We've currently got 76 volunteers. Um, our aim is over the next two years to try and get 101. Um, we just made it, we called it the Dalmatian Project, and we, we just wanted to focus in terms of getting extra volunteers, um, which means that we can obviously... Um, have more people answering the telephone and providing a better service for a longer period of time. And what I found interesting you just told me was it, it's not a, a local service in the sense of if someone rings from the Isle of Man they may not even get you at all? No, not at all. It's a really clever telephone system that we've got. So if you ring the Isle of Man branch and the Isle of Man phones are busy at that time it will automatically um, move on to the next branch that have got a spare phone and it will be answered anywhere within the UK. Because I mean some people would be concerned that they may know the person on the, on the other end and this way there's pretty little chance for happening. No, absolutely not. Um, I've been a volunteer for four years now and I haven't recognised anybody at all on the telephone. So what makes a good volunteer? What, what are you looking well, for? We're looking for anybody who's 18 or over, um, no maximum age whatsoever, um, who's got four hours a week to give to us within a 24-hour time slot, any four hours, so it doesn't have to be a regular um, occurrence. And literally, we just need somebody who can listen. Um, we give full training, so the training is two Saturdays and four Thursday evenings, and you're taken through a lot of the scenarios that you will meet um, during so, your time on answering the phone. A good listener not making any assumptions, no, those we, sort of things. We, are, um, we, we don't give advice. We're non-judgmental, so it's, you know, it's not for us to say whether something is right or wrong, um, whether people have been good or whether they've lived a bad life. That is not for us. We are purely there to listen and to work through people's feelings with them and to talk through how they are feeling at that time. And, for instance, yourself, what have you got out of it? Oh, a phenomenal amount. I think if you speak to any volunteer, they will always say they feel that they get a lot more out of it than maybe they give into it. It makes you appreciate your own life, for one. Um, a camaraderie with the, the fellow volunteers that are a, a myriad of, of different um, ages and professions. There's just every walk of life who are as part of it. And a continuation of uh, training as well. So you get to, to train about things that you would most probably never ever have dealt with um, in terms of mental health, um, drugs, sexuality, um, just a phenomenal amount of training that goes into supporting you. Um, whenever you're on duty, there's always a fellow volunteer with you, at least one other person, but there are also three other volunteers who are actually at home in their own house who are also supporting you. So you never feel as if you're alone. You never have the troubles of the world on your shoulder. And I know that's one thing that quite often when we've had people who've wanted to volunteer, they've sort of said, well, you know, I'm not sure I could deal with the pressure perhaps of some of the, the conversations that you have. But, you know, you never go away or you should never go away from the building, feel that you've, you know, you've had a, a hard time. And in fact, most of us leave feeling that it's been worthwhile. Do people ring you when they really are at rock bottom or, I mean, is that when they should ring you or, or should people ring it's you? It's a real point? sliding scale. I mean, we would always hope that people would pick up the phone and, and call when they're just starting to feel a bit low, depressed, in need of someone to talk through how they're feeling. But yeah, we get the, the extreme end as well when people are very much at the end or have made the decision to actually end their life. Um, and we would support them through that decision if they, they made that. Um, and we would stay on the telephone whilst they made that choice. Wow. Um, so that can be quite tough, and that's why we need the extra support of our volunteers. 
Um, you know, we have Samaritans for the people who need us, but we, the Samaritans themselves also have a Samaritan who looks after their welfare. And that's, that's a big key part of, of being a Samaritan. Okay, well, the number's on the screen if people want to get in touch or go down to the Strand Shopping Centre uh, on the oh, Saturday. Absolutely. Um, Strand Shopping Centre from 10 till 4. And then we're also giving presentations with a bit more detail about what we do do um, at 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock. So do come along and, and have a chat with us.